It was the story of Abe, Abraham Lohr, and uh, she had no interest in starting a game company. And I, I knew that we'd probably have problems if she wasn't running it and doing the negotiations for the publishing deals and stuff. So I wasn't giving up. As a last resort, I was like, well, let me tell you this story. Because I knew she was a sucker for uh, characters and stories and stuff like that. And I told her sort of the broad view of the epic of the Quintology and it focused around Abe. And uh, she was like, great, let's make five movies. I was like, no, we're going to make five games that maybe later will become five movies. And uh, that was, she was like, ugh. <laughs> but uh, that's what happened. So it was the story of Abe. And uh, in the larger epic, so I told her more things that, that we haven't seen yet. But that's what hooked her in. She fell in love with Abe. Thousands of years. It's been there for thousands of years, and it's a, one of the causes of the schism. And exactly what it is, we've been a little tight-lipped on through the years, but it's, it was put there as a reminder, as a reminder to something that was lost. And Soulstorm touches on this a bit, because in Soulstorm, we're touching on a lost history, uh, a, a false history and a lost history. So one everything that Abe and his people were taught, they find out just wasn't true at all. And then two, what they weren't taught, that is something magnificent. Like they're actually something way more special than they ever thought they were. And whoever put that on the moon left that there as a reminder thousands of years ago because that force apparently understood that this world would be under deception, the world of Odd World would be under deception for millennia to come. So we're dealing with sort of prophetic forces, possibly ET forces, uh, you know, kind of like Earth, right? Like, we, you know, we have all this uh, ancient aliens. People like to get into all these different speculations about what our origins are. You know, some of it's crazy, some of it's not. But um, it's, re it's a really interesting idea. Who are we? Where do we come from? What do we think about ourselves? What are we really? What do we not know? And, and I love those themes because I think we're living those themes all the time. It's really interesting speculation to be like, well, what if, you know, what if, what if you were some really incredible thing that was just always taught that you were just, you know, some lowly schmuck, you know, someone that didn't really matter, someone that just deserves to be a cog in the wheel and should be grateful for that. But then you find out, you know, all the people you're using as slaves are really phenomenal psychic geniuses, you know, like what if that were the case, right? And what if they start realizing that? Then what might happen, and that's that's sort of the theme of the over, overreaching arch of the quintology. So as it relates to the moon, the moon is a reminder, but almost no one alive remembers what that reminder is. There's the appearance of democracies, but it's really global, full full on globalization. But the thing about dictatorships and totalitarian systems is that they they have to. Let me say, no one gets a big following by saying, we're evil. <laughs> to me, that innocence is usually a basis by which I try to make build core characters out of so that it's hard to have judgment on them so that they, so that you try to connect empathetically to what their journey is and what their problem is. And the way we do that is to try and make them identifiable, you know, and that's, that's something that's always been in our themes. For Soulstorm, I, I kind of, I felt it was appropriate that we should be looking at like what's our history, what do we know versus what we don't know, and so if I had a theme that I wanted to play with personally, I thought that was more relevant today, and so it was good timing, to then pick up into what happens after people free themselves, what other complications emerge, when they wake up. And I find that really interesting. I'm not necessarily saying I think that's a theme that sells games. <laughs> you know, it's not like a research department said, make a game about that. It'll really sell. But I look at it like what's going to resonate with people as a truth that they can identify with. So for us, I think this philosophical stimulation is something that uh, is missing in a lot of content. And so I think there's room for it. Like people actually, when they experience it and and they they think about it, I think it 
for some it will resonate for other people say, ah, this is just garbage you know where's my new shooter but uh for those that don't i think then it holds something special <laughs>